Joining me now is independent journalist Glenn Greenwald. Glenn, it's great to see you as always. Now, even though Rowling, as I said, is in the clear for now, she's not backing down. She wrote on X that if they go after any woman for simply calling a man a man, I'll repeat that woman's words and they can charge us both at once. Glenn, this was quite a moment. Yeah, and I think what it illustrates is the danger of this law, which is, okay, the Scottish government doesn't want to prosecute someone like J.K. Rowling because of her prominence and her resources, and they don't want to give credence to this idea that they're trying to criminalize standard political debate. But, of course, that's exactly what they're doing. And the fact that they actually could prosecute her, that her statements would fit into the parameters of the law, and that she's just not being prosecuted because of the arbitrary decisions of the people in power illustrates why this law is so dangerous, precisely because it depends upon the willingness of the government to allow free speech or to shut it down by prosecuting people at any moment, including people who were involved in important political debates about some of our most crucial social and political questions. Given what I said in the angle about how, look, Americans will, you know, they'll be interested in this, but they'll kind of wave it off, saying, oh, this would never happen here. But we saw it happen. Glenn, you and I went through this during COVID. We've gone through this time and again on hot button issues. People lose their jobs. People lose uh, their income or worse, as you're seeing with Trump. No, I think it's a crucial issue where we cover a lot of free speech infringements in Western democratic countries outside the United States because so often they're harbingers of what comes to the United States. It might be a little bit more difficult to enact a law like this because of the First Amendment, but the mentality that's driving it, which is that there's a group of people who are elites, political elites or people who call themselves disinformation experts, whose judgment about politics is so superior to everybody else's that they have the right to enforce their judgments, not by persuading people, but by force of law, to punish people who think differently by criminalizing them or censoring from the internet or banning them altogether, is something that we're seeing increasingly throughout the democratic world, mm. including in the United States, where the Biden administration constantly picks up the phone and demands that people uh, that big tax silence American citizens in a way that has been found unconstitutional. But laws like this can also mean that if, say, Facebook or Google has to comply with Scotland and the EU and the UK and Canada, eventually, just through default, that's going to be our internet as well, even if those laws couldn't exist in the United States because of the First Amendment. It has a big impact on American citizens. Uh, a related point, Glenn, is, is the left or the cultural Marxists, whatever you want to call them, they're trying to take words off the table, like certain words you can't say. That's always a way to go, you know, go around having a real debate. But the word bloodbath that Trump has used, watch. Bloodbath what? is an ugly word. We when got, Trump uses it, what is it it's when not, Biden uses it? No, no, no. Let's be very clear. You got to actually ask me the question in context of what it was said, right? And what the it, what it was said when he said that. They're not the same. And your question is disingenuous. We have to denounce violent rhetoric, which wherever it comes from, a former leader, we have to denounce that because we saw what happened on January 6th. Okay, Glenn, they're going back to Jan 6. They use that as their battering ram against the First Amendment. Your reaction to bloodbath is now the new word you cannot speak unless you're a liberal. Well, I was going to go to January 6th, too, because what happened there was the speech Trump gave that they blamed for inciting that violence. When he spoke, he said, of course, you're going to now go to the Capitol and protest peacefully. So in order to get out of that, they said, oh, well, he used a phrase that is a wink-wink to violence, which is when he said, fight like hell. And yet you can find Joe Biden and almost every politician constantly saying, fight like hell to their followers. It's a very common political phrase. And the same thing here, bloodbath is a common term in our language. We use it metaphorically all the time, and now they're trying to control language by saying that as they unite and claim that a certain word means something that we can all hear in context that doesn't actually mean, somehow that meaning is supposed to be binding on us, because again, it's that same mentality that they know better. That is the mentality of controlling discourse. But then, Glenn, that, that is the way to redirect the conversation away from an actual debate on, in this case, what's happening at the border, to you're a mean person. <laughs> That's where we are.
I mean, this is the key worry is all of this happened after 2016 when the British people ignored what they were told and decided to leave the EU through Brexit, and then especially with the American election where Hillary was defeated by Trump, and they came to conclude that they cannot allow free debate anymore because it's too dangerous because people are uncontrolled. And all of this that we're seeing is a reaction to that, to the fear of allowing people to debate things freely. Well, bingo. Glenn, we don't have you on enough. Great to see you. Thanks so much. Always great to see you, Laura. Thanks. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.